What's going on guys, Seth here for Tasty Loot Gaming, and I wanted to go through your guys' picks of the Game of the Year 2020. Now, you probably already know this, and if you don't know this, we did a video recently of our picks for Game of the Year and two runner-ups. It's a great conversation, so make sure to go back and check out that episode. If you missed it, it's like two episodes back. But I asked you guys what was your picks and runner-ups, and you guys gave me those picks and runner-ups in the comments below and i'd like to go through those discuss what you guys picked uh and yeah kind of use it also as like a, a way to write a list of uh, games i should be going back and playing if i miss them you guys know you know i played a lot of the games in 2020 and i still didn't play some of the most anticipated or most praised games of 2020 so i'll definitely be keeping an eye on the games you guys said are the game of the years unless they're ones of course that i also agree with you on or i also played but uh yeah there's some surprises here there's some uh Definitely not surprises here, and uh, I thought it'd be fun to uh, include you guys in the conversation, so uh, let's jump into that. But before we get into your guys' picks for Game of the Year and your two runner-ups, I just want to say that we are almost at 2,000 subscribers. I think we need 20 more subscribers left to hit 2,000, so if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you're not new here, make sure to tell your friends, share this video, share other videos, whichever one of our videos you like the most. Get it out there and let people know that we are almost at 2,000 subscribers, growing this community. Very exciting stuff. I'm fucking I'm, I'm excited. I'm fucking ecstatic. I'm stoked that this is uh, that this is about to happen. It's gonna happen, but doing it sooner than later would be great. And uh, we will definitely do some kind of like fun group stream. We'll have Chris, Chevy, everybody on, uh, and uh, maybe play some Jackbox games for a couple hours or whatever, uh, just to kind of celebrate um, hitting 2,000. Huge milestone. And yeah, we also have Discord link down below if you'd like to talk to us. And uh, we got social media links down below as well if you'd like to connect with us. And uh, we are on audio platforms all over the place. Links down below if you'd like to listen to us. So uh, with all that said, um, see you guys fucking 1,980 something subscribers. That's fucking crazy, guys. It's crazy. It's crazy too. Fun fact. I've been doing this channel for like five years. I didn't tell anybody about it for like three to four years. So... Uh, we had like this slow build to like 200 subscribers and some of you were around for that. Um, and then at the beginning of 2020, we hit 1000 and then now we're bit about to hit 2000. So, I mean, like, it's just, uh, we, we've got the, the ball rolling finally and it's, uh, it's been really cool to see it grow. So, uh, and, uh, this community is great. It's the best community, dare I say on the internet. So, um, if we can grow that and have these conversations every week that would be awesome so exciting so exciting all right so all that said um i'm gonna go through you guys picks we're gonna discuss uh what you guys picked and yeah we got quite a few uh comments here um i asked you guys thank you guys for commenting and let's do this so chumba punk 2077 which i know is cody tasty crew um says uh game of the year is ghost of tsushima his runner-up is Hades, and his runner-up number two is Last of Us Part Two. So me and Cody are kind of pretty aligned on this one. Um, he picked Hades, which I loved Hades as well. Uh, wasn't my runner-up. Mine, one of my runner-ups was kind of a kind of a stretch, but a technical pick. Um, but yeah, he says, uh, Ghost of Tsushima is one of the most memorable experiences I have had in a long time. Fluid gameplay, great characters, history, as well as worthwhile collectibles. I agree with you on that 100%. Ghost of Tsushima got me back into serious gaming this year. Hades, fast action, memorable characters. It's difficult and it's replayable. Definitely replayable. That game uh, kind of redefines how um, uh, roguelikes and roguelites can be uh, replayable in a meaningful sense outside of just the gameplay mechanic. I'll be coming back to Hades for a long time. I want to get back into it, honestly. I was playing, I was loving it, and then same story as always. I, you know, new games came out. I hopped over to check them out. The Last of Us Part Two. The Last of Us Part Two. The the P in there throws me off. Normally people just put T L O U two, but uh, technically you're correct. Uh, part two, the only reason this isn't my second runner up is that I haven't finished it yet. I'm about 75% through the game and it's another banger from Naughty Dog. Two G's. I need to be in the right mindset before I finally finish this depressing ass game. 100%. This game, there is no, um, there is no victory. There is no, uh, hero in finishing and going, yes, I won. I beat everything. It's really... You really, uh, you finish that game and you're like, man, that was uh, impactful. 
Happy holidays, Tasty Crew. Stay tasty. Well, you're Tasty Crew too, motherfucker. You're talking to yourself. But thank you. Happy holidays to you and everyone else if you celebrate holidays. If you don't celebrate holidays, happy days to you as well. Hopefully, uh, you're doing a, you're doing good. You're, you're doing a good. Um, hopefully, you're doing a good. Uh, hopefully, everyone's doing good and staying, staying safe right now and staying tasty. All right, Cody. Uh, thanks for the comment. And uh, I mean, to say that I agree with you, pretty i don't really need to say it two out of three for us has been the same picks so yeah great picks um and i agree with pretty sure everything you said on that one so it's really easy your comment was very easy thank you for the comment and uh, yes ghost of shima was very good uh next one we got is from sarah she says uh game of the year cyberpunk 2077 so bold as to pick cyberpunk 2077 game of the year that uh it takes some some guts to pick. Not to say that's right or wrong, but you know, with the climate right now, uh, very cool, very cool to see. She says, uh, "I haven't played a game I've connected with so much since the original Mass Effect." It's funny; it's the second time I've heard Mass Effect be brought up when it comes to this game. I, all capitals, love this game. The storytelling, character development, questing is so comprehensive. I feel like every NPC I talk to in Night City is interacting with my character, not just a cookie cutter idea of what V is supposed to be. Uh, this is something I don't hear enough from people, honestly. Um, but when you go on Twitter now, it seems like people who are enjoying the game are starting to speak up and they're starting to fight with each other, with the people who don't like it. And I'm seeing a lot of times people who haven't played the game uh, are in this conversation as well, which I welcome. But, you know, just understand, you know, if you haven't played the game, you haven't experienced it yourself. You kind of shot yourself in the foot a bit in some ways, but it's always okay to have your own opinions on things, regardless if you play or not. But um, but yeah, this is something I'm not really seeing talked about a whole lot. And uh, talking with Sarah about this a little bit, uh, she has told me that um, some pretty interesting stuff. She's further than I am, so uh, yeah. I love this world, and I love being a net runner. I've got 60 plus hours. I think I'm like a 20 some hours, so way ahead of me. Hours in this game, and luckily haven't experienced too many bugs and nothing game breaking. There are definitely issues, even beyond the bugs. I won't get into those here, but the game is certainly not perfect. There is no perfect game, though. It's unfortunate the game released with so many general bugs with, or that any real issues will be ignored until the game is more stable. I can't speak enough of how much I love this game. Very cool, very, very cool to hear. Uh, first off, that you enjoy this game so much, but also that somebody picked Cyberpunk 2077 as their game of the year because uh, as a person who's playing it and enjoying it, um, I, I see the potential there, for sure. I just haven't played it enough and uh, kind of disqualified it for myself this year just because it came out so late. But uh, very cool, and uh, I agree with a lot of what you said there. Um, Runner-up, Ghost of Tsushima. This was going to be my game of the year. I like the story and the world, but it doesn't compare to the depth of Cyberpunk, in my opinion. Uh, the multiplayer is the only advantage it has over Cyberpunk 2077. I love how MMO-y it is, and the raid is cool. I want to do more. I hope they continue to support this mode. I want to do more as well. Um, in case you guys don't know, in that raid footage we put out, Sarah was one of the people who uh, was playing there, so uh, definitely would like to continue that and beat the next two um, chapters of uh, Tale of Vio. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, as stories go of like your story and and uh, and uh, you know, World River, I, I get what you're saying when it comes to cyberpunk. Um, multiplayer, yeah, that multiplayer is the big thing that pushed the game for me. Otherwise, I like the game as well. Ghost to Tsushima, that's what I'm saying, you know, the, the other game, um, or this game. Uh, but the multiplayer being added on this year was a huge boost for me. It really pushed the game into being one of my favorites. Um, or my favorite, <laughs> not one of my favorites. It is one of my favorites, technically. Second runner-up, Deep Rock Galactic. This is the perfect game to just jump in into and play. Character progression and multiplayer elements are impactful. The game hasn't stopped being fun. It's just simple and engaging. Uh, it's funny, I forgot that this game was officially released, um, and also released on Xbox, uh, this year, so, um, that one snuck by me, if I would have known that, I would have, uh, uh, possibly picked it myself, because I'm also a huge Deep Rock Galactic, uh, fan, and I love that game to death, although, um, and it's a great pick, I'm, I would never argue that away from anybody, like, that's, that's I fucking love Deep Rock, but, um, uh, yeah, there's there's so many good games this year. It's so hard to fucking pick. So I was all my picks were like the ones. Well, Hunt not really, but 
everything else was like stuff that emotionally impacted me. I think Hunt was my Deep Rock Galactic in the game that I was just like, I fucking love playing this game. It's so fun to play, which is obviously very important. So uh, great pick, Sarah. And uh, yeah, some really interesting ones there that I don't think other people are going to be picking uh, with you, which is uh, which is cool, which is cool. There's a lot of uh, you know the same games I'm hearing, which is great. They deserve it, but I think other games also deserve some credit. So, all right, uh, Jeremy says ask TLG. Uh, he actually typed in hashtag ask TLG. Very nice. Uh, first, I have to do a big mention for Bless Unleashed. Oh, that's a that's that's an interesting one. I played this game every day for more than three months. I don't know. I don't even know why. The game is not especially that fun or good graphics. It's just an okay game. But you know, I played it during the lockdown, joining guild and playing co-op with people uh, make it a way better experience. Um, I mean, that's interesting. So the social aspects of it, which I argue a lot of times is one of the biggest pulls of MMOs. I've had people push back on that. I'm like, no, dude, like people play them because fucking the social interaction without the people, most people wouldn't be playing these games. Um, You're kind of showing it right there. Like, you know, you're saying the game's fine. But just the people and the experiences you had with people uh, was a huge factor for you this year in gaming. Makes complete sense. And this year is definitely the year that, like, you can really appreciate some social uh, interaction in gaming. So it's a good pick. Uh, In third place, Ghost of Tsushima. This game was a great surprise for me. I played it more than 200 hours. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Game of the year for me. So uh, 100%. I probably put it multiple hundred hours into it it's funny because i played it at first single player uh for a while and i enjoyed it and then the multiplayer came out and i put so much time into that and then i finally went back in and played the single player and put a shitload of time into that as well i plan on putting more time into it so um it's a game you can sink a lot of time into so it's it's very cool uh in second place monster hunter world iceborne for all the free dlc monsters in festival capcom ad uh fatalis for example hunting and uh, getting our ass kicked by him was so fun. It's the funnest getting your ass kicked. Uh, good pick. It's a good pick. Um, Monster World and Iceborne is the gift that keeps giving. And until they give, uh, or give, <laughs> give us give us more Monster Hunter. Until we get a new Monster Hunter World, um, obviously we're getting Rise soon. We're excited for that. But like, you know, mass release all on everything uh, Monster Hunter. Um, there's so much to do in that game. There's so much to do in Monster Hunter World that... Um, like I said, it's the game the game that keeps giving, man. Like, fucking, you play it, and you can play that game forever. They did such a good job supporting that game. So it's cool that you picked it. Uh, my game of the year is Final Fantasy VII Remake, one of the best I've ever played. Uh, I'm shocked that... Oh, I'm shocked that... I'm shocked that you guys did not beat it yet. Uh, I don't want to spoil or, or scare you, but the ending of Part 1 may change all your idea about the game. It's a pretty special, intense ending. Personally, I fucking love it. When you finish it, you have to play it in hard mode. He's yelling at me. Um, yeah, dude, it, it sucks. Like, I fucking, I've played it. I'm probably like a third through it. I love it, but I couldn't even put it on my list because I haven't played it enough to really, uh, you know, say, say that it belongs there. I feel like it, was irres- it would be irresponsible for me to do that. But I feel like if I did beat it, it probably would have easily been on my top three. So I'm glad that it's your game of the year. Um, I believe everything you're saying. I've heard nothing but good things about it. I've heard some meh things about it as well, but I haven't heard anything bad about it. Um, It's just the sheer amount, for me personally, I can't speak for anyone else, but uh, the sheer amount of games that I have put on my plate every year, but this year specifically, uh, has just been so much. And I, I, on my own fault, I prioritized a lot of games and I just, I I couldn't get the time to play Final Fantasy VII and that, that could just be, like I said, my prioritization, so which were kind of fucked. But I played a lot of games this year. Um, Final Fantasy VII is great. I do plan on beating it, for sure, though. Uh, it's a great pick. Great picks in general. Uh, very interesting ones. And uh, oddly enough, I really like your uh, shout-out to Bless Unleashed because, uh, as you kind of said, it, it's kind of a whatever game, but um, you can still get enjoyment on games like that. And I think people don't... Uh, don't mention that enough. So, all right. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, next up, we got Keith. He says, game of the year, World of Warcraft Shadowlands. Big shocker. Big shocker. Uh, I don't know if expansions typically count. They absolutely do count. Uh, typically, first off, you guys can pick whatever the hell you want, right? But uh, with us, I try and keep some loose parameters. It needs to have released in 20 or in the year that we're picking uh, pretty much. So 
we've kind of played with that a bit with how I picked Hunt Showdown, a game that came out in 2018, but released on certain things in 2020. I don't know if I like doing that, but technically we don't have a rule against it. But we try and keep it in the year. It needs to be a game release or a big chunk of content. Expansions are big chunks of content. Um, if you picked like Beyond Light or something like that for Destiny, I would also, you know, be cool with that. Uh, we just really try and make sure people don't pick like, you know what, this fucking $7 DLC came out that had like three costumes to my favorite game, so it's my game of the year. You want to pick that? That's cool. You know, I'm not going to respect in the same way that if somebody picks something of the year, the best game of this year that released this year, but um, I'm also not the type of guy who's going to fucking tell somebody that their opinion is illegitimate. So, um, yeah. Anyway, long story short. I, I personally count expansions, so, uh, but I'm addicted to WoW again. It's the best it's been in a long time. Runner-up would be, so going back real quick, uh, you're addicted to it, which, uh, you know, we talk in the Discord, or not as much as we used to, because you're playing WoW, but uh, you're playing WoW, and uh, obviously you're addicted to it, you're super into it, which is great for me to see, because I know, you know, in the last expansion, a lot of the people in the Discord and in this community who are into WoW were not so stoked about the last expansion, so it's awesome to see that you're addicted to it, and it's the best it's been in a long time. That's cool to hear, too. I'm very happy for you uh, being able to play a game that you're very passionate about. Um, again, in, in a way that you can enjoy it. It's very cool. So I'm, I'm glad that Shadowlands could be your game of the year. Uh, your runner-up is Ori and the Will of the Wisps, a game that is on my list of games to play. I might just throw it on the game of the month uh, list just to make sure I absolutely have to play it at some point because I really want to play it, but priorities. Uh, second runner-up would be Final Fantasy VII Remake. Final Fantasy VII Remake getting a lot of love. Very cool to see. I uh, Like I said, I'm upset it's not on my list, but I couldn't put it there. Um, yeah, great list. Um, Will the Wisps, Wisps, I gotta play it. I gotta play it. Very excited to play that, and I need to be Final Fantasy VII Remake. Great list, Keith. Thank you for the comment, and enjoy. Wow, I'm glad they made it good again. Amelia says, Dreams felt magical but I wouldn't call that a game. It's a game engine disguised as a game that makes games. I agree with you on that 100%. Me and Chevy, since the beginning of Dreams being talked about on the channel, have pretty much discussed it as more of like a creative suite. I kind of said this in the in my reply to you, but I kind of look at it as like something you would pay monthly for, like on Adobe or something like that. Um, one of their, uh, you know, programs that you can like do video editing and photo editings and special effects and stuff like that. I mean, Dreams is really like a creative suite of content that allows you to make anything that you want within certain parameters. It's just gamified. So, um, and I love Dreams. I think it's great. I own it. I don't use it. Um, but uh, I, I love that people have access to a way to make stuff in a gamey way. Um, so I agree with you on that. So your game of the year is Yakuza Like a Dragon. Uh, fun fact. Okay, so... Um, and by the way, it's a great pick. I've heard nothing. I've heard nothing but great things about this game. I picked this up. I've played it. I think for about fourteen hours now, and I have to say, I am in fucking love with this game. Yakuza Like a Dragon is awesome. Um, so much so that, and I got to go back and play all the Yakuza's. I played a couple of them, but never beat them. Um, I'm gonna beat this. I love this game as an RPG. I hope that they, so much so that I almost wish all the Yakuza's were RPGs. Um, and I know people who are like Yakuza fans are probably like, blasphemy. I love the way they did the RPG element in this game. And the uh, the game looks fucking great. The cinematics are fucking fantastic. The story is awesome. The characters are awesome. Very anime-like. Um, it's just such a, a charming-ass game that's fun to play. Like, it's it's... Legit, if I would have played this earlier in the year, this game might make my top three easily. I'm fucking in love with this game right now. So, I haven't beaten it yet, but a uh, great pick because I'm really enjoying this game, like, a lot. So, Yakuza Like a Dragon, very, very good game. I'm glad I'm finally playing it. Um, I think it's only, like, 30 or 35 hours, too, so I'm, like, probably getting close to halfway through it. But uh, I, I definitely will beat it. It's the only game that's, like, really on my mind lately, except for Dead by Daylight because that's all I've been playing. Runner-up, Crusader Kings 3, another game. I got to invest the time to learn to play, but uh, I've heard great things, and I know the people who love that series love that series. Second runner-up, Doom Eternal. That's really cool to hear. That game, I feel like, got you know a lot of play when it came out and then kind of dropped off, and you've kind of been carrying that torch for that game most of the year, so I'm glad that that kind of resonated with you, and by the end of the year, you're still going, this is my second runner-up. Doom Eternal's fucking awesome, so it's cool to hear. I'm happy that you're enjoying it. 
um, or enjoyed it that much, I need to go back and play it more. Special shout out to 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Criminally overlooked. Um, game I had a ton of fun with. Oh, I'll get into that in a sec. So I bought Yakuza Like a Dragon because I've heard such good things from everybody, including you. Um, and it's awesome. I've also been hearing great things about 13 Sentinels uh, Aegis Rim all year. Need to play that as well. I am planning on buying it. Uh, I tried to get it on Steam. It's not there, so I got to get it on... on uh, my PlayStation, obviously, I was hoping it'd be on sale, but it's like still 60 bucks. But uh, I like the other things those those guys have made. So um, I'm really excited to play that. And just how much I, I keep hearing how good this game is, it's, it's like a must play for me now. So when I beat Yakuza Like a Dragon, I think I'll pick up that game and play it as well. And I'll definitely be talking about it on uh, Tasty Cast once we get into a regular rhythm again. Towards the end of the year, is always so busy for us. It's fucking been kind of uh, disorienting. Game I had a ton of fun with was Disaster Report 4, though not a game I'd recommend unless you know what it is. It has a lot of charming qualities to it, as it's very much a Shenmue designed game with its quest structure and design. I agree. I played I've played an older Disaster Report, but I also played Disaster Report 4, didn't beat it, but I played it. And uh it's such a Japanese game. It's the that somebody would spend the time to make a game about this scenario and gamify it. Um, is something that you're only going to get out of really Japan or indie games. Um, and it is, in a weird way, you're saying like charming qualities. It, it does have those for sure. Um, I always enjoy this kind of game. So it's an, it's it's a cool pick and kind of shows me kind of where where your eyes go when it comes to gaming and, and, and uh, you know, looking for those, uh, those overlooked games almost. So very cool. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion was the worst I've played this year. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was the most boring. Big, bold words. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion, worst you've played this year. I can't agree with you on that, but I respect your opinion for sure, just because I've, I've played a couple other games this year that I really just did not like. I kind of want to make a list of the worst games of 2020 um, and go through that. I mean, like uh, Ubisoft game, Hyperscape, uh, I really didn't like. Um, a couple other games, too, I really didn't like. But, um, but I can see that. Uh, I played Watch Dogs Legion. I really, 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 really like the idea of Watch Dogs Legion, but the gameplay is so fucking basic that uh, I, it's been hard for me to go back and play. Um, so you're not going to get an argument from me, really. I just, you know, I think there's some worst games, but that's, I, I, I kind of feel you. And then th here's the big one. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was the most boring, the most boring game of 2020. I've heard nothing but great things about that game. So that's uh that's interesting. I haven't played it though, so I can't I can't join that conversation. But uh, but you say that I've heard other people say opposite. It's a, it's very interesting. Um, I still want to try it. I'm gonna buy it on sale though. I think I think Amazon has it for like thirty something dollars right now physically. So I kind of want to buy that. Continuing, I feel like Demon Souls would be up there for me if I had a PS5 or Cyberpunk 27, 2077 if it released as polished polished as they promised. I'll make an exception to include some games from 2020 into my game of the year consideration for 2021 when I get around to playing them. The Ancient Gods Part 1 is one of the greatest pieces of DLC. Ever? 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 That's a Doom Eternal. That's a big claim. That's a big, that's a big claim. Big claim. But very cool. I'm glad they really like it a lot. As for Demon Souls, it's great. It's fantastic. I fucking love it, and uh, it is the it's the must own game for PS5 for sure. Uh, and then Cyberpunk 2077, we've talked about. We had a great long conversation about that the other day. Make sure to go check that out. We got comments over there that I need to still go through because you guys have a lot of opinions on the game. Great, nuanced, very this community. Uh, you know, opinions that are, you know, critical, but also fair, which I really, you know, appreciate people sitting there and actually thinking about what, what is wrong, not that the whole thing is wrong, what's wrong in the picture, and, and possibly can it get fixed, will it get fixed, stuff like that, great conversations there, but, um, but yeah, Cyberpunk 2077 definitely has its issues, and it's so hard to kind of like consider for game of the year in the state that it's in, although, as we discussed, on PC and PS4, you're having different experiences no matter what like you're playing different games so it's hard it's hard to discuss um with people with different experiences but uh but yeah great picks really interesting picks um your pick for game of the year because like a dragon man i'm just sitting here going like fuck did, by the time i beat this game is that is that what i would have picked we'll, we'll find out but I, i'm really 
not over saying this when I say I fucking love that game so far. All right. Thank you, Amelia. Next one, we got Stick. Game of the Year, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Final Fantasy VII Remake is getting a lot of love from, from everybody, but this community in particular is really uh, loving that game. Uh, Stick continues, Final Fantasy in general has had a great year for me personally, with not only the release of the remake, but also the patches for 14, especially patch 5.3, which is the true highlight moment in Shadowbringers. For Final Fantasy VII, I played a good ways into the original late last year to get a basis on what to expect and to know the area uh, they are turning into a full game. The amount of detail and additional content that they have uh, that they were able to introduce into the Midgar section was surprising. I had a blast playing through the game and seeing scenes from the original and how they changed some of the areas up. I absolutely loved what they did with the wall market section. That was a fantastic moment this year. The boss fights in the game are some of the coolest encounters I've had in bosses in a while, and the music is fantastic, fantastic, uh, with how every boss gets its own unique track. Uh, I won't spoil the ending, but after doing some research search and still having to play through the original, I am not bothered. Maximilian Dude has a fantastic spoiler cast with easy allies that makes the ending way more interesting and entertaining rather than worrisome. Interesting. I, uh, I'm a fan of easy allies. I know of Maximilian Dude, um, but I don't watch him. But uh, once I beat it, maybe I'll listen to that for sure. Great pick. Uh, it's hard to argue. I, I've said since before the game came out that it would be like in my top three. It didn't make it for obvious reasons. I talked about it already, but it's been making the top three for most people I've talked to. So uh, makes sense. It's a huge game. It's one of the biggest games of 2020, and I'm glad that you enjoyed it that much. Um, no surprise here. Runner up. 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. This game is an absolute masterpiece and could easily be my game of the year if it wasn't if I wasn't a Final Fantasy fanboy. The story is one of the best in this past generation and is probably one of the best science fiction stories ever told. Hold on. Is probably one of the best science fiction stories ever told. That's fucking... You guys are making big fucking claims here. These are, these are some really heavy claims, man. I don't know if I can carry these. This is, this is huge. Very... My hype... Whether you know I beat that game and agree with you or not, my hype level right now is so fucking high for this game, the way you're talking it up. Um, it has a lot of science fiction tropes in it, but it puts them to good use and consistently blows your mind with fun twists. So this is funny. People always talk about tropes, and they talk about if you use a trope, which fucking almost everything's a trope. If you use a trope, it's bad. It's like, no, you just use them good. It's just like, oh, that story's been told. Most stories have been told. Tell the story well, tell it better. Like, like there's so many things, and, and like you're saying here, it, it puts them to good use. That's very cool to hear. I'm glad you even acknowledge that. I haven't played it, but, you know, I, I feel that if you're noticing tropes and saying they're being used well, uh, you know, you're obviously paying a lot of attention to the game. The art style is phenomenal. I love that, that guy's art style. And one of the best of this year, which isn't surprising since it's Vanillaware, Exactly. It is surprising how fantastic this game is, and I had reservations about the combat before the game launched. I didn't know the game had combat. Uh, after learning it and finding some overpowered combinations, it became a lot of fun and more satisfying than I figured it would be. I hope more people give this game a chance. It really deserves more recognition. Um, I'm going to give this game a chance for sure. I'm going to play it, and uh, if I like it a lot, even if I don't like it, which I don't see happening, um, I'll definitely, definitely be discussing it on the show. So uh, I can't wait to play this game. I'll try and push the 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim Love, uh, once I play it. And, uh, you know, it, it does seem like, I haven't played it, but it does seem like a very overlooked game. Because the people who have played it love it, and no one else is talking about it. So, you know, there there isn't even like that backlash of people going, hey, stop talking about games you like so much. It's not that good. No, stop talking about a lot of games that, that everyone's talking about. They're not good, blah, blah, blah. You're not even getting that. It's just people love it, and no one else is discussing it so uh it's a game that's definitely really high on my list it's like next like three games i have to play uh runner up ghost of tsushima this was a histor this was the historical japanese game i have always wanted and sucker punch delivered in nearly every way the only issue i have with the game is that it, the story didn't stick with me for very long after the game during my playthrough i enjoyed it but after a few weeks uh it kind of just faded from my thoughts i do remember some of the amazing moments and i figured my problems uh is playing it in japanese which was hard to focus on subtitles when not in cutscenes. this is why i played in english because the game was originally made in english at the japanese later um but it's a cool kind of thing to i'm going to go back and play it that way i'm going to play it in japanese and in the kurosawa mode uh on my second playthrough but uh but yeah, I agree. That's kind of the, the rough thing is like looking at, at 
subtitles while fighting, something like that. The game is absolutely beautiful and the combat is a ton of fun, I agree, which helps elevate to a uh, runner-up position because I had no problems with doing everything in the game. It is one of the few games I went for the Platinum in because I wanted to keep exploring, killing Mongols in crazy ways, plus it has a fun camera mode to make some amazing screenshots with. A dangerous camera mode because you go into that thing, I'm in there for like an hour each picture, just fucking fuck around with my composition, changing color tones, making sure like everything is just like, you know, perfect. Um, it's a really good camera mode. Um, I, I agree with everything you're saying. Uh, you don't mention the multiplayer, so I'm curious. Let me know in the comments. Uh, did you play the multiplayer? Um, that's the thing that pushed it over the edge for me. But otherwise, I agree with everything you're saying. So uh, it's a great game. I really enjoyed it as well. And I think it uh, doesn't revolutionize anything, but it evolves it, um, which is good. Moving things forward. Honorable mention, Persona 5 Royal. In all honesty, this game should be my game of the year since it is uh, Persona 5, but way better. I feel that it is unfair since a lot of the game is the same as Persona 5. I still have yet to get the new semester. I do love the changes they made and the addition so far. The game is the definitive way to experience Persona 5. Question. Let me know in the comments. I've played Persona 5. I have not beaten it. I've only played, I think, like the first castle. I've beaten that. So I'm not very far into it, even though in that game, that's like hours and hours into the game. Um, I'm not that far, story-wise. Should I abandon that and just play Persona 5 Royal? Or should I play the original and then pick up Royal to appreciate it? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. 2020 Game of the Year predictions. Ooh, I like where you're going with this. Final Fantasy was 14 expansion. That would probably also be on Chevy's list. Breath of the Wild 2, if it comes out. Uh, that game, if it comes out, it's going to be a big deal for sure. Horizon uh, Horizon Forbidden West, which, yeah, that is a huge, uh, hugely anticipated game for me as well. Games I'm looking forward to. Yakuza Like a Dragon PS5 release. I'm playing it right now, and it is fucking awesome. So definitely play when you can. Persona 5 Strikers. Don't know what that is. Shin Megami Tensei 5. I'm interested in that. Disco Elysium, the final cut. Uh, the original Disco Elysium is really good. Uh, Monster and Rise, right there with you. I'm fucking stoked for that game as well. Can't wait to play it. I don't expect Final Fantasy set or seven <laughs> Final Fantasy 16 in 2021. I don't expect it either. It's possible. It looks pretty far along, honestly. But um, I don't expect it either. So I'm with you. But um, if it comes out, it comes out. Hopefully, uh, you know, with not a lot of bugs. Don't rush games, guys. Uh, or make them for seven years and find a way to still rush them. I don't know how you do that. Uh, okay, thank you for the comment stick and uh, great picks, and great breakdowns. Always love reading what you have to say about these uh, games. And uh, let me know about Persona 5. Um, yeah. Flap, Jack, Daddy, Claps, Dummy, Thick, Pancake, Cheeks, No Syrup. It's getting easier to say. Uh, game of the Year, Ghost of Tsushima. Does not explain why. It's just Game of the Year, and it's great, and I agree with you 100%. Runner up, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Also great. Love to see the love for that game. And the most boring game of 2020 is his second runner-up, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which uh, is a game that uh, I've heard nothing but great things about other than now one person. Um, to be fair, though, Flapjack, Daddy Claps, Dummy Thick, Pancake Cheeks, Pancake Cheeks, No Syrup, heard some bad things about the game, played it, and then liked it. So kind of shows that those opinions can can kind of uh, flip-flop a bit there. So, you know, you actually play the game, you see why it's good, maybe you hear great things about a the game, then you play it, fuck, it sucks. It's always interesting. I always kind of love watching people's opinions, not necessarily speaking for him or his opinions, but, you know, hearing some things, playing, and then end up digging it, really cool to see. So, made his top three, which is dope. So, most boring game of 2020. Uh, <laughs> not my words. Uh, thank you for the comment. Flapjack, Daddy Claps, Dummy Thick, Panky Cheeks, No Syrup. The Josh, our final comment. Also Tasty Crew. Game of the Year, Ghost of Tsushima. A lot of Ghost of Tsushima love as well. We got a lot of Final Fantasy VII Remake and a lot of Ghost of Tsushima love going on here. Almost no fucking Last of Us Part Two except for me and Cody. Um, although a lot of people didn't play that game too. Which, uh, which kind of sucks, but I understand because I also saw those leaks and it was uh, detrimental. But yeah, his pick, same as mine. Couldn't agree more. Runner-up, one. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Most boring game of 2020. Fucking he loves it. 
very cool to see. And then runner up to Hades. Hades again showing up. Uh, I've already said my piece on Hades. I'm sure he will as well, but Hades is fucking awesome. Uh, if you haven't played Hades and you're not Chevy, check it out. Uh, okay, so he says Ghost of Tsushima was master class, innovated open world, and free DLC. Beautiful, tremendous. I added that part. Uh, Valhalla trimmed fat and streamlined the formula. Fun combat and missions puts it on top of all Assassin's Creed games. Valhalla is the king of Assassin's Creed games, according to Josh. I feel like I'd probably agree. I'd probably agree. I haven't played it. But I liked where Odyssey and Origins were going, gameplay-wise. And I feel like this is the next extension of that trajectory, the, the, the way it's going. And I'm sure it's bigger and better than the last two. So, very cool to hear. Uh, between Josh and uh, Flapjack fucking, uh, and everything else I've heard about the game, uh, I'm, I'm, my hype's up. I need to play it. And I want to play it sooner than later because with Assassin's Creed, they'll have a new Assassin's Creed out soon. It's going to be even bigger and better. And then this one's going to be overshadowed. And it's like, I got to play it while I can, uh, while it's still uh, relevant. And then lastly, he says, Hades is hands down one of the best roguelites ever made. It took the most boring aspects of roguelites, returning to the hub after dying, and made it different every time. Amazing gameplay loop. That's really what Hades is doing here. The gameplay's fun. It's a fun game. I'm not going to take away from that at all. But that it is evolving the gameplay loop of roguelikes and roguelites um, is just masterful. It's it's a very... Anyone can go, I want to make a game in that genre. But these guys, time and time again, have made these very rich narrative story-driven games that are fun to play, action-wise. And they took all their strengths and put it into a roguelite that plays great already. And they really push that storytelling element that they're really good at. And um, you, the end product is something that's essentially, in my opinion, the best in class. Uh, outside of a couple other ones that I really love, but they don't tell a story anywhere near Hades does. They don't tell it. They, they don't even fucking try. So, um, yeah, Hades is really kind of up to the bar for the genre. And, uh, yeah, it definitely deserves all the praise it's getting in 2020. All right, guys, that is all of your comments for your game of the years. We've got a lot of love for Ghost Tsushima, a lot of love for Hades, a lot of love for, uh, well, some love for Last of Us Part Two. We got somebody who fucking loved the shit out of Cyberpunk 2077, Final Fantasy Seven. Uh, we got some Doom Eternal, uh, Crusader Kings 3, uh, shout out to 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim, and um, uh, fucking Yakuza Like a Dragon, two of the, I guess, underdogs, uh, but, uh, you know, um, dedicated crowd darlings of 2020, definitely. And so many other games that uh, that came out this year. 2020 has been an awesome year. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to let me know what your game of the year and runner-ups are, uh, let me know in the comments below here. Um, I'll definitely reply. I probably won't make another video, but uh, I'm definitely curious. I love hearing what you guys have to say about these games and looking at my face here, just looking completely confused. Let's find a better face real fast. Maybe this is, maybe, no. From first. Oh, no, okay, perfect. Um, but yeah, I, I love hearing what you guys have to say, specifically when it comes to this kind of thing. We all have our own preferences and opinions, and I like that you guys voice those with us every week. And uh, Game of the Year, it's the, it's the culmination of, uh, of the whole year um, as a whole. So, uh, thank you for watching this episode of whatever the fuck this is, uh, and uh, stay tuned. We got Plus Club coming up. It's either going to come up Sunday or Monday. Because of the holidays, things are kind of fucked up, but uh, Plus Club's coming, and then Game of the Month, I think, will be Wednesday or Thursday. So, it's really weird, I know, but, uh, you know, bear with us. The episodes are coming. We've played all the PlayStation Plus games. We've played the Game of the Month. I need to play more Game of the Month, which is Smite. Uh, you guys picked it. I need to play it more. I've been playing a little bit on my Switch, honestly. Um, and it plays kind of well in there, but I definitely prefer playing it on, on PC. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. Two episodes coming up. Three episodes coming up. We got Tasty Tuesday as well. Uh, so yeah, my name's Seth. And uh, stay safe. Have a good holiday weekend if you're celebrating that. And until the next episode, take it easy. Take it easy.